Eileen, and I'm a tutor with Bricks for Kids. This year our workshops are a little bit different because of COVID-19, so we made this video workshop to visit your class remotely. Even though I'm not in the classroom with you, I hope you will be nice and respectful while listening to and watching our video. We're going to learn some cool facts about STEM today, and we'll learn a lot about helicopters and flight. Once the video is over, we have provided some fun worksheets all about what we've learned today. First, do you know what STEM means? STEM is science, technology, engineering and maths. We teach children your age all about STEM so that you begin to think differently about the world around you and the inventions in our everyday lives. People who work in STEM design and operate everything from the phones and computers we use every day, all of the huge cargo ships, and even rockets and shuttles that travel into space. By learning about STEM, we develop awesome abilities like problem solving, creativity, teamwork, leadership, curiosity, and communication. All of these things help you to start thinking differently about the world around you. Let's learn about helicopters now. The first helicopter flew just over 80 years ago, but the idea is much older than that. There is a long history behind today's helicopters. In the 12th century, Chinese children played with flying tops that used a similar idea to the helicopter. The earliest version of this was a stick with feathers tied to the top, and when it was thrown into the air, it would spin. This toy was introduced to Europe and in the 15th century, Leonardo da Vinci, the famous artist and inventor, sketched plans for a machine he called the helical air screw. Da Vinci believed this machine would be powered by four people turning gears. However, he never built or tested this. In the 18th century, two French inventors used da Vinci's plans and the flying top to build a toy with a rotary wing. This proved that da Vinci was correct, that his helical air screw could work. For many years, people developed and improved upon all of these ideas. And in 1939, the first helicopter flight in America took place. The helicopter was designed and built by Igor Sikorsky and was called the VS-300. Many early helicopters were used only by militaries, but by the mid-1940s, Companies like the Bell Aircraft Corporation were producing helicopters for civilian or non-military pilots to use. This model here, the Bell 47, was the most popular helicopter available for over 30 years. Since then, helicopters have gotten bigger and faster. Today, there are helicopters that can carry up to 80 passengers, like the Russian Mi-26 helicopter that we see here. The fastest helicopter in the world is the Sikorsky X2, which has a top speed of 460 kilometers an hour. That's almost four times faster than your car's top speed. Now we're going to look at Igor Sikorsky. Sikorsky was born in Russia in 1889, and he was very interested in inventions and flight from a young age. He learned all about the art and inventions of Leonardo da Vinci, and he loved to read adventure novels by the French writer Jules Verne, who wrote Around the World in 80 Days. Igor Sikorsky was only a little bit older than you are right now when he designed and built his first prototype helicopter. A prototype is an early test of a machine or product to test whether it will work. Sikorsky was still in primary school when he used rubber bands to make his prototype helicopter fly. And by the time he was 19, he had decided to spend his life studying flight and designing airplanes and helicopters. He moved to America in 1919 and worked as a teacher before starting his own aircraft company. He designed and built airplanes and flying boats for almost 20 years while trying to make his helicopter designs perfect. 
He succeeded and his VS-300 helicopter flew for the first time on September 14th, 1939, just over 81 years ago. The design that Sikorsky used for his VS-300 with a simple rotor above the pilot and a small tail rotor is still the most popular design for a helicopter today. We've got a video here from 1940 in which we can see Igor Sikorsky himself in the pilot seat of the VS-300. He controls the machine by using levers and a foot pedal. The foot pedals help the pilot to change the angle of the rotor. Photographers and spectators watch as Sikorsky's helicopter takes off vertically into the air. We see Siskorsky land the helicopter and lift off vertically again. He travels for a few seconds before landing the helicopter once more. When we think of flying, we usually think of either airplanes or helicopters, and we know that both of these do different jobs. While airplanes are popular for long journeys and can carry a lot of passengers across a huge distance, helicopters have different strengths. Because helicopters can take off and land vertically, they are much easier to land than an airplane. Usually, a clear patch of ground or a helipad is all that is needed to land the helicopter. This means that they can be used in very busy areas and in some big cities. There are buildings with landing pads on the roof for helicopters. Helicopters are often used by rescue teams when a person gets into trouble on land or at sea. They are fast and light and can cover a search area easily. They also can have tools added to them so that a member of the crew can be lowered from the helicopter by a rope to help the person in trouble. Firefighters also use helicopters, especially in areas where wildfires happen often. In parts of Australia and America, for example, the dry hot weather can sometimes cause huge areas of trees and plants to catch fire. Firefighters use modified helicopters which can carry huge tanks of water to try to stop these fires from high above. This is a much safer way for them to put the fires out. The rotors of the helicopter mean that it is able to hover. Hovering is when the helicopter stays in one spot in the air. It does not need to land or keep moving. The pilot can control the rotors to stay still. This can be very useful when rescuing people from the water and in case of flooding. As well as in emergencies, helicopters are used by news channels to report on traffic and big news stories. Helicopters can be prepared for flight very quickly, so reporters can get the news stories very fast. Another area that helicopters work is in tourism. Sightseeing tours of forests, ancient cities, waterfalls and other amazing scenery can be done from helicopters. This is especially useful in places where the place you want to visit is difficult to reach. Like if it is deep in a forest that is impossible to drive through, you could take a trip in a helicopter to visit it. Photographers sometimes use helicopters to take awesome aerial photographs. Aerial means from the sky, so the photographer takes photos of areas and buildings that could not be reached or seen from the ground. A really cool example of this is when photographers take pictures of old castles and the grounds around them or when they use aerial photography to help historians to learn more about the past. What makes helicopters so useful? Their shape and how they work is very important. Did you know every part of the helicopter isn't designed to allow for vibration? When the rotors spin and the helicopter is moving, there's a lot of noise and vibration. Every part of the helicopter needs to be tested to make sure it can handle these vibrations, to make sure that the helicopter is safe for use. The rotor is a set of blades on top of the helicopter that spin to create lift. There are usually four blades and each one is shaped to help push the helicopter upwards. The top of each blade is curved so that the air moves over it quickly. The bottom of the blade is flat so that the air pushes against this side with more force and that is what pushes the helicopter up into the air. Each blade is set at a slight angle so they can use as much wind power as possible to move upwards. The two bars below the helicopter's body are called landing skids. Unlike airplanes, helicopters do not have wheels for landing because the helicopter can take off and land vertically. There is no need to use a runway or wheels. The landing skids absorb the impact from the landing to protect the body of the helicopter.
The front of the helicopter or fuselage is rounded. In here is the cockpit for the pilot to sit and steer. If there are passengers or crew, they will be in here too. As well as the cockpit, the fuselage also contains the motor and the fuel tank that power the rotors above. Moving back from the fuselage is the tail of the helicopter. The tail boom is long and usually much narrower than the fuselage. This part helps to keep the helicopter balanced when it flies. If the tail boom was shorter, the helicopter would be much heavier in the front and impossible to fly. At the end of the tail is the tail rotor. This is much smaller than the main rotor and its main function is to help the pilot steer. The main rotor creates torque while turning and the torque pushes the body of the helicopter in the opposite direction to the way that the rotors turn. So, if the rotor is turning clockwise, it creates torque that pushes the helicopter anti-clockwise. The tail rotor's main job is to balance out the torque and make the steering much easier. This is a helicopter we designed and built earlier. Can you see how all the different pieces fit together to make a cool machine? In this model, the battery pack acts as the fuselage of our helicopter. Can you see the pilot's seat and the tail rotor as well? And there's the pilot. There are many different people who work in STEM and both design and fly helicopters. Pilots use STEM every day for calculating the length of their journey to the operation of the helicopter itself. Helicopter inventors and designers use STEM when researching and designing new machines. Engineers are responsible for many different parts of the helicopter, from the parts that fit together to form the body of the helicopter, to the computers in the cockpit that help the pilot to navigate. Manufacturing the parts of the helicopter is a very important job. While helicopters are very useful, and have a great number of benefits. There are some downsides to them as well. Helicopters are not energy efficient and a small two-seat helicopter uses about 50 litres of fuel per hour. Helicopter fuel is very expensive and is also a non-renewable resource. Helicopters are not as fast as planes and most helicopters have a top speed of around 200 kilometres per hour while planes can travel at about 900 km per hour. Helicopters are also a source of different types of pollution. Noise pollution is caused by the loud chopper sound of the rotor as the helicopter flies. And air and sea pollution is caused by the release of the emissions and fuel from the motor. However, the future looks bright for helicopters. A number of companies are working on new prototypes that are cleaner and better for the environment. Some of these prototypes are fully electric. Some are much quieter than today's helicopters and all of them aim to make the helicopter better and more suited for a green energy future. Guys, thank you so much for listening and learning with us today. We hope that everyone learned at least one new fact about helicopters. Now our video is finished, but we have some cool activities to help you become a junior helicopter engineer. Stay safe and we can't wait to see everyone in person again. Bye from Bricks for Kids!